former Attorney General is there. What is up the President's sleeve? Let's hear him. Presidency, Attorney General, Minister for Information, ladies and gentlemen of the media, let me welcome you warmly to the seat of the nation's presidency and begin by wishing you all a happy and productive new year. I've invited you here to announce to you, members of the media, and through you to the Ghanaian people, the discharge of one of the most important functions of my presidency. As you will re recollect, in recent times, the stench of corruption in public life was such that there was a general nationwide demand for the creation of additional focused instruments to fight the canker of corruption that was visibly gnawing at the heart of the Ghanaian state. The response of the new patriotic party to this demand was inter alia to pledge in his manifesto for the 2016 general elections the establishment of the Office of Special Prosecutor, an independent non-partisan body with the relevant professional capability to lead the fight and hold public officials, past and present, accountable for their stewardship of public finances. The enactment of the Office of Special Prosecutor Act, Act 663 2018, by an MPP dominated parliament is the first stage in the fulfillment of that pledge. Satisfied of the constitutionality and propriety of the legislation, I assented to it on the 2nd of January 2018. The Act, pursuant to Section 13.3, provides for the nomination by the Attorney General of a person fit for appointment by the President of the Republic, subject to approval by Parliament, by an absolute majority of its members, to perform the functions of the office. The Special Prosecutor, once confirmed by Parliament, will carry an extraordinary responsibility, independently and impartially, to fight corruption. The special prosecutor, as the act states in his preamble, and I quote, shall have full authority and control over the investigation, initiation, and conduct of proceedings of alleged or suspected corruption and corruption-related offenses involving public officers and politically exposed persons in the performance of their functions as well as persons in the private sector involved in the commission of alleged or suspected corruption and corruption-related offenses." Unquote. The remit of the office, as you can see, is broad and challenging. The Attorney General is by letter dated Thursday, 11th January 2018 of today's date, addressed to me exercised her power of nomination and submitted to me for my acceptance the name of the proposed special prosecutor. I have accepted the Attorney General's nomination and will in turn submit for Parliament's approval when it reconvenes on the 23rd of January 2018 for its first meeting of this new year, the name of Martin Alemisi Burns Kaiser Amidu to be the first special prosecutor under the law. I have done so because I'm fully convinced that Mr. Martin Amidou, a prominent legal personality who held the high office of Attorney General of the Republic in the government of the late President Professor John Evans Atta Mills, has the requisite integrity, competence, courage, and independence of character to discharge effectively 
the responsibilities of this new office. D, the Supreme Court itself has had cause to commend the nominee for his public spiritedness in the case of Amidu versus Attorney General, Waterville and Wyoming, when the court, per the respected judge, Doce JSC, had this to say about him, and I quote, the role of the plaintiff, Martin Alamisi Amidu, a distinguished former Attorney General of this country, needs to be highly commended, as was done in the lead judgment of the court. The plaintiff, in my opinion, must be highly commended for his vigilante role in protecting the wanton dissipation of the public purse." Unquote. The court also, in a related suit, had this to say about the nominee. Quote, the plaintiff, that is to say Mr. Amidu, is to be commended for his public spiritedness, which has fueled his meticulous and industrious presentation of this case, unquote. I can also personally vouch for his public spiritedness. We were on opposite sides in a series of landmark constitutional cases in the period of leading up to the years of the Fourth Republic, well known to students of constitutional law, which helped shape the evolution of the Constitution of the Fourth Republic. As Deputy Attorney General as he then was, he conducted those cases with the fairness, which should be a cardinal feature of the conduct of any self-respecting lawyer. Mr. Amidou has indicated his willingness to accept the appointment. I thus have the honor to submit to Parliament, when it reconvenes, the name of Martin Alamisi Burns Kaiser Amidou for its approval for appointment as special prosecutor. It is my hope and expectation that the praiseworthy speed and dispatch with which Parliament acted for ministerial appointment last year will characterize its handling of this in nomination to enable Mr. Amidou, as soon as possible, enter into office to begin the important work that awaits him. I congratulate him on his deserved nomination and wish him Godspeed in the valiant efforts he will undoubtedly be making to enhance the quality of governance of our country. The Ghanaian people will be the ultimate beneficiaries of that. Thank you and may God bless us all in our homeland Ghana. Great and strong. So you've just heard it, the very first special prosecutor, if Parliament approves of it, it's Martin Amidu. President Kufuado has just elaborated on the reasons why he thinks that he is fit for this position. He has also said that Mr. Martin Amidu has indicated his willingness to accept the position, so his name will be submitted to Parliament, and he hopes that Parliament will expedite action just as it did with his uh, ministerial appointment so that Mr. Martin Amidu can enter into office as soon as possible. And of course, he, before he mentioned the reasons why Mr. Martin Amidu needs to be the man there, he says, he speaks about the NPP's response uh, to the issue of corruption and the fact that it is a pledge in their manifesto to establish an independent special, special prosecutor's office to hold offices, both past and present, public offices responsible for their stewardship. Of course, the president also uh, re re refers to the fact that he has sent it to the bill on the 2nd of January and... He's hoping that Mr. Martin, Martin Amido will get to work as soon as possible. Now, the core functions of Mr. Martin Amido, if Parliament approves of him, is to have full authority and control of initiation and prosecution of offences uh, involving 
persons, as the president says, who are politically exposed, as well as those in the private sector. And I'm going to go on the internet and try to get a bit of Mr. Martin Amidu, a bit of information about him. Now, he is, of course, a Ghanaian politician. He was the Attorney General and Minister for Justice from January 2011 till January 2012. He is also the man who is known to have introduced the word gargantuan into the lexicon of Ghanaian politics when he opened the can of worms about the Wyoming scandal, which was said to be the worst financial scandal in Ghana's uh, fiscal history at the time. That is obviously a, a, a story that the president uh, goes back to. And you cannot uh, decouple Mr. Martin Amidu from the Wyoming case, which of course we're still pursuing, by the way. And during his time as Deputy uh, Attorney General, a little bit of information here I found uh, somewhere on Wikipedia. Let me just quickly go through it. It says, Mr. Amidu served as a Deputy Attorney General for, uh, for about uh, the last four years of the PNDC military government. He's a member of the National Democratic Congress. We know that. Even though there have been, of course, some issues, uh, whether or not he's still a member, it's something that even party executives aren't able to speak categorically to. Mr. Martin Amidu, in the meantime, believes that he is indeed uh, a member. Uh, after civilian rule est established in the Fourth Republic in January 1993, he continued to serve in the government of Jerry Rawlins as Deputy Attorney General. He, he did that for both uh, terms, lasting eight years till so January 2001. A little bit of information on him as well in the December 2000 presidential elections. Now, the information here says that he stood as the running mate of John Atta Mills. Uh, they both, however, lost to President John, uh, Kuf, uh, John Kufo that year. And he was, of course, instrumental in the Mills administration as well. And that is where all the major controversies actually started. Now, in January 2010, following a cabinet reshuffle, President Mills replaced Clestus Avoca at the time with Mr. Martin Amidu as the Minister of Interior. And I know you may have seen him, but just in case you haven't, we'll be putting up his picture uh, shortly so you have an idea of the, the kind of person we're talking about, coupled with the information I'm giving you about his person. Um, as M Mr. Amidu is uh, Bursa, some people raise questions as to his neutrality in dealing with the Boko conflict. He, however, went successfully through vetting by the Parliament of Ghana and has since assumed his post. Now, that is information that happened. That is information that happened uh, at the time that President uh, uh, President Mills was in power. His post as Attorney General. A bit of information I have here as well. Now, following the second major cabinet reshuffle by President Mills, Mr. Am Martin Amidu became the Attorney General and Minister for Justice of Ghana. His removal from office. Uh, Mr. Matsunamidu was relieved of his post on Thursday, January 19, 2012, by President John Evans Atta Mills, and the circumstances described by AIDS as his misconduct at a meeting chaired by the President at the Usu Castle at the time on January 18, 2012. Mr. Matsunamidu had made allegations relating to alleged financial impropriety on the part of another cabinet minister. Allegations he was asked by the president to substantiate. Martin Amidu, who is also the former attorney general, single-handedly challenged the legality of the payment after being relieved of his post at the Supreme Court. And if you recall, he was in court all by himself, took the matter upon himself to have the Supreme Court sit on it, which is what has culminated in what the, the very famous uh, case uh, involving Mr. Woyeme. Now, the Supreme Court in 2012 ordered Mr. Woyeme to pay back the money as Supreme Court judges unanimously granted the Attorney General their clearance to execute the court's judgment that ordered Mr. Woyeme to refund the cash to the state. Now, following the delays in retrieving the money, Mr. Amidu again in 2016 filed an application at the Supreme Court seeking to examine Alfred Woyome, and this was an oral examination of Alfred Woyome on how he would pay back uh, the money after the Attorney General's office under the Mahama administration, led by the former Minister for Justice Marietta Bu Apia Opon, discontinued a similar application. Now, in February 2017, Mr. Amidu withdrew his suit seeking an oral examination, and with that, he explained 
that the change of government under the new patriotic party uh, led by His Excellency President Nkufuado and his Attorney General Gloria Ekufu's assurance to retrieve all judgment debts wrongfully paid to individuals, including Mr. Woyome, uh, in uh, and, and in response, pray the Supreme Court to stay proceedings on the oral examination on the oral examination uh, uh, since he had filed for a review on the case. His lawyer, Mr. M Mr. Woyomet's lawyer, Mr. Anku, argued that his client will face an irreparable damage if the oral examination is allowed to take place. But then the Deputy Attorney General Godfrey Dami opposed the application, and this is a matter that's still going on. Let's speak to Dr. Akwete. Dr. Emmanuel Akwete on this. Dr. Manola Kwete is the executive director of